this point. From these, you told us you could give us readings, which would stress the important dates in the lives of each of these mystery people. Would you please give us a summary of your readings for each of these folks? For the first, this is a horoscope for Pisces with Cancer Moon on the Ascendant and Cancer also. 1969 was a difficult and uncertain time, which could have seen a separation of some kind. 1976, you came into contact with someone intensely powerful who didn't quite live up to your expectations. But 1989 was perhaps the most traumatic period in your adult life. It may have been the end of a long-standing relationship, but at the same time, some new and positive elements started to appear in your life, which may still be in operation now. So that's the first one? That's the first one. And was there a second one? This reading is for a Taurian with Libra ascending and Sagittarius moon. You're well balanced and diplomatic as long as you get your own way. November 79 was extremely significant and represents a relationship. However, it's August 1990 that brings a sudden skyrocketing change with success and possible awards. That's number two. That's number two. Well, now please welcome the two subjects of these readings, Jimmy Cooper and Nina Mishko. First, Jilly, would you tell us how accurate and meaningful Tad's reading, and in particular the dates, were for you? Um, 69 was good because, um, except it was a very, because I got my break on the Sunday Times, and so that was the first thing that you know, happened to me. Um, oh, I know, I was interviewing somebody very, somebody very, somebody very famous happened to be in the 19th, and I interviewed Mrs. Thatcher. But you said, Jilly, it was a, I met a very powerful man. <laughs> oh, right. Well, by extension. <laughs> so that was pretty good. Half and then 79 was... 79 was a, cha a major change in appearance. Also, you began new and strong relationships. That was 1979. No, no, I behaved myself there. You <laughs> well, Nina, tell me how accurate was yours. I have to say, I was staggered by how accurate he was with the general sweep of my life and a lot of the emotions in it. For instance, you said 79 was a a very significant year for me and there was a, a, a big relationship and this may sound ludicrous or pathetic or self-indulgent but in, in May of 79 I had a, a, a major nervous breakdown and I went to a therapist and I went to a therapist thereafter for seven years mm -hmm. and that was the most significant relationship I had in my adult life really. Also August of 90 I didn't get major public acclaim but you said there was an absolutely skyrocketing change in my life and it's true, I met a man, I fell deeply in love with him, I'm still in love with him. He's changed my life absolutely radically, and it was August of 1990. You know, what I was surprised about, and Tad, is that as I was reading, and I did read the transcripts this afternoon, I read number one, and only number one, and I found that I could relate very closely to it, too. <laughs> and I think that perhaps if we were to pass it around in the audience, if you search hard enough, you'll come up with some sort of correlation. I'd like to thank you very much for doing this test for us. Thanks also to Dilly and Nina. Now I'd like to ask the opinions of some of our guests in the audience. I think it's a load of rubbish. I have to admit that what I find primarily wrong with it is just basically composed of a series of chance correlations. There is absolutely no basis whatsoever to your theory of revenue. There is no proven knowledge of it whatsoever in known science. And frankly, what I think is taking place here is that you're using an ancient cosmology I don't think that there's any scientific basis for astrology whatsoever. And this is where I do agree with uh, Tadman, that resonance can exist between the magnetic field of the sun and the gravitational tug of the planet. Now, the activity of the sun is transmitted to the earth via the solar wind, and there is a great deal of evidence that magnetic uh, activity of the earth's magnetic field can affect a whole wide variety of organisms on the surface of the earth. I think it's an insult to the human spirit, this specious bullshit. And uh, I think people should be angry about it. I think it is, it is really uh, degrading. I, I think it's largely exploitative. It's not perhaps as bad as spiritualist mediums, but it, 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 it covers the same ground of the poor, bewildered people who are told uh, by the astrologer that somehow they're important and extraordinary because the whole universe was poised in, in a unique state just at the moment of their birth. Twenty years ago, Crick and Watson discovered the double helix that this man has been going on about. They won the Nobel Prize for it, and, and they, you know, they, they, they formed the basis of the science of genetics. Oh, we'll have that too. We'll add that into our specious, semi-pseudo-scientific drivel.
And I, I think people should be angry about it because it's nonsense. Tell us, uh, Doctor, in your opinion, is astrology science or superstition? It is science because it's open to investigation and evaluation. Some astrologers have been brave enough to provide evidence for their claims. So my task has been to look through this evidence and evaluate where they've gone wrong if the skeptics are to be believed. With some notable exceptions, sadly I found in most cases they had made mistakes and got it wrong. But I was left with some very convincing evidence. The scientific community does not believe it. And the reasons they do not is that it smacks of mysticism, magic and hocus pocus. My regret is that there's so many intelligent, able people wasting their time and, might I say, taking other people's money um, in this hopeless cause. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all very much for your contributions. One of the most popular claims for astrology is that it can guide you through your love life. Every day, hundreds of copies of books on this aspect of astrology alone are sold. Please welcome my final guest, the author of books such as Love Lives and The Seduction the seductive, pardon me, art of astrology, Carol Golder. Carol, are some pairs of star signs more compatible than others? Yes, I think they definitely are, even in sun sign astrology, which in fact is all we've got time to do here tonight, but yes, they are. Carol has kindly agreed to do a demonstration for us tonight. We scour the countryside to find 12 blissfully married couples, and despite the odds, we found them, and here they are. What we have here is one man from each of the 12 astrological signs, accompanied by his better half. Now, gentlemen, please move to your star signs, taking your wives with you. So, Carol, we've given you the zodiac signs for all of the wives. What have you done with this information? Well, I think I've probably broken up a few happy relationships, actually, without meaning to, but who knows? We're soon going to discover. I see. So you've read the signs and you've figured out who they should be compatible with. I've done a little generalization on the signs, and as I said before, some signs are more compatible than others. So would all of the ladies now please move to the astrological sign that Carol says they should be romantically compatible with. Ladies? Will you look at this? I don't know what the charm is this gentleman has, but he's attracted three wives. And, uh, gee, there's one gentleman over here, and another one here, and another one here. Uh, well, thanks to all. Carol, what do you think of that demonstration? Well, I think it proves the point that um, a lot of people can get on with people that aren't necessarily right for them. Well, tell me, does this demonstrate the basic principles of the kind of thing you do? No, of course not. I will do a date, time, and place of birth of somebody, and then I will see how their planetary aspects correspond to their proposed partner. No matter what sign you are, you really ought to be able to get on with them. Well, Carol, I hope that you make a lot of people very happy. And thank you very much for coming tonight. Astrology is controversial. It's everywhere. But I'm still waiting for the proof. You've seen the evidence. Now you make up your own minds. I'm James Randi. Good night.